Hey lovelies, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I hope you like this video and I also hope that you end up subscribing to my channel. So today's video, what we're going to be doing is using our one, two, three, go tips from Ecotour Nails and applying them with poly gel. I did see this technique on um, Baby Girl Nails channel and she made it look so easy. It actually is an easier way to apply these tips, um, but a few things that I did learn in this video, which I will share with you as we discuss, as we discuss throughout the video, as I talk throughout the video. So anyways, I have already applied the tips to my right hand and on my thumb on my left hand. Um, all my nails have been prepped and primed. If you wanna see how I prep my nails, I do have a video for that. Um, somewhere towards the middle of the video, I do go through all the products that I used. So just keep watching for that. I am um, right now applying the pinky nail and what I've noticed so far is that the poly gel really holds this tip into place so that allows me a little bit more time to clean up the cuticles the cuticle area clean up the sidewalls and then just you want to also um, clean up underneath the nail i went in with too big of a bead of poly gel on all the nails, but this was my first time doing this. So next time I will go in with just probably half the amount that I'm going in with. So um, I'll go in next time with half the amount that I went in with this, went in with on this video. I can't find my words today, you guys, please forgive me. So um, Basically, what you want to do is etch the surface of the nail that's going to be applied to your nail bed. Apply the poly gel. Probably use about half of what I used. You want to smooth that out. And you do want to make sure that around the cuticle and the sidewalls that the poly gel is thinner. However, when you apply it, it will thin itself out. Um... I applied this kind of at a 45 degree angle, so I made sure the cuticle, um, first I made sure the nail was going the nail was going on straight, then I made sure that I wasn't applying it right on the cuticle. I applied it a little bit away from the cuticle because I knew some of the poly gel might, um, might come out at the bottom. And if you apply it too far away from the cuticle, you can just like kind of push the nail down a little bit or you can just take it off and try again. You wanna make sure that you get out all the air bubbles. And what I should have done a little bit better is the cleanup underneath the nail because it wasn't cured and because these stay into place, it allows you a little bit of time to clean up underneath the nail. So you just wanna, um, make sure you clean that up because I ended up filing off some of it and it just didn't turn out as neat as I like my nails. So apply a little bit less poly gel than I'm applying in this video. And then once you get that applied onto the nail, onto your natural nail, then turn, flip the nail over and just remove the excess poly gel. And all you really have to do is just with the wet brush, just, um, separate it and just roll it off the rest of the nail. It's pretty easy to do. So especially if you want to do a sheer nail, which was my intent with this video is to use a sheer acrylic, which you'll see in a little bit. Um, use a sheer acrylic as a dipping powder. Um, but I really just watch. Yeah, so just watch so you'll see what I mean later on in the video. So I'm going to show you... Um, I think I'm gonna show you one more nail. I did remove all the footage that was out of frame. I was out of frame like at least half of this recording. Um, so here I'm just cleaning up the cuticle area and you see the nail's not moving. I haven't flash cured it, I haven't done anything. I cured, when I did cure, I cured everything for 60 seconds and I did knock the nail off. I think I knocked off 
I hit the tip of it somehow and it came off, but you can just pop that right back on and make sure all of the air bubbles are out. So prep your nail, etch the surface of the, the tip, apply the poly gel into the tip, and then just smooth it out, place it on the nail, and then just clean up around the cuticle and underneath the nail. It's pretty simple. And so this is how they all turned out. Um, I'm not gonna keep them this length. Uh, that's ex extremely too long for what I do during the day. Um, but I do like a long nail, but that's just, that wouldn't work at all. So after I have filed and shaped, and I'm gonna go in with some, it's Model One's acrylic powder. I'm gonna go use this as a dipping powder. And um, I did do a swatch of it. I didn't show the swatch on um, on video, unfortunately. Um, but I really liked how this came out. It's a really shimmery pink, so it's kind of sheer, but then it gives you like the glitter inside. And you can see on my right hand, I didn't, when I was applying the poly gel and the tip, I didn't go in and um, clean up all that poly gel, so that's why it's so much underneath the nail. But I, um, after I'm done with this dipping powder, I will go in and file use my e-file and clean some of that up so to do a dip nail so i'm doing this dip nail over this um one two three go tip and those tips i believe are made out of gel products so can you apply acrylic over gel yes you can can you apply gel over acrylic yes you can so it's essentially the same thing I know that um, in one of the groups I'm in on Facebook, they were asking about it and a lot of people weren't advising, were advising not to do it. I'm not quite sure why. Um, we mix products all the time. We put gel polish on top of acrylic all the time. We um, can do a gel fill on acrylic nails. As long as you've removed any lifting and you're prepping your your nails appropriately i don't see the problem um no i'm not a licensed nail tech i didn't go to school um but i'm not sure if they teach you not to mix gel and acrylic in school so um as far as i'm concerned um i'm doing this on myself so i'm fine i don't do anyone else's nails i just do my own nails so i'm totally fine applying acrylic over a nail tip so um even if it is a gel nail tip most nail tips are plastic we apply gel and acrylic over it with no problem so don't feel like you can't apply product over these tips the reason that i apply product over these tips is because they are they are thin like they're great for a press on but i need just a little i just need a little bit more thickness and I really enjoyed the set that I did last time, and this is my second time using these tips, these full coverage tips, and it helps me a lot with the structure and the shaping of my nail. Um, this is something that I'm still learning, and like I said, I only do my nail, so I don't get a lot of practice, um, only when I do my nails. And then when I'm using my flexi hand, it's a little bit different for me getting the right shape and the right structure on the nail with using my practice hand. Um, I find it a little bit harder to do than to do on myself, but that's also probably because the way that, the way that my hands are trained is to mostly work on myself. So like I said, yeah, I only do my own nails. I don't do anyone else's nails. Anyways, um, I am applying the dip powder with the Lifu um, resins. I'm using the base, putting on an even thin layer, dipping the um, dipping my nail in the pot. I'm the only one using this pot, so I'm not really worried about um, germs or anything like that. My hands are clean when I start my nails, and if I use the restroom or something while I'm doing my nails or I have to take a break I wash my hands again so I'm not worried about it being sanitary I'm only using this on myself 
As far as using dip powder in a nail salon, I really don't know how that works or how um, they would sanitize the client's hands and do dip powder. I don't know, but for myself, my hands are clean. So I have no problem dipping inside the powder. So going with a thin layer, you just dip your nail into the powder, tap it off. And once I go in with the um, orange stick as well, just to try and get anything that's on the sidewalls or the cuticles before it dries so I don't have any lifting. And then once I have done that and the resins have dried, I go in with a pretty firm brush because I wanna get all of the excess powder off because if you don't get all that powder off, you'll get little white dots in your finished application. Once you put on that type top coat, you'll see all these little white dots in your, um, your dip powder. And that's because we're not wiping off all the dip powder. I know a lot of people suggest to use a soft brush. If that soft brush is getting off all that excess powder, perfect. If it's not, go in with a little bit of a firmer brush. Um, or if you want to make a hunt, you want to make sure 100% that the resin is dry. How, so if you're going in with a soft brush and it's not dry, you might not be getting it all off. But if you wait till it's dry, it doesn't matter if you use a soft brush or a firm brush. My goal is to get everything off. And you can see there, I kind of hit the nail before it was dry. So I just kind of flattened that out. And what I'll do is when I go in with the other layer, I'll fix that little mistake right there. So just go in with thin layers of your base coat and dip your powder, tap it off once it's dry, knock off all the excess powder. I did not go in with a layer of clear to encapsulate. I don't always do that. I'm so guilty of that um, because I honestly don't see the purpose of always doing it. Um, if you're using chunky glitter I see the purpose or if you're doing like an ombre I see the purpose but um, with this sheer powder I didn't see the purpose of going in with another layer of clear so I ended up just doing three layers of this dipping powder they were thin layers um, and after everything dried I filed it I didn't have to do a lot of shaping and then I top coated it so I do not like how these turned out. I don't like how I could see the poly gel underneath. When I swatched this as a dipping powder, it came out a little less sheer. So I I like the shape and the length, but I don't like how these turned out. Um, so that's what I used, the Brano Soft Pink. That came in a kit. I use Model 1's acrylic uh, M0002. And I used Yoyogi Top and Base Coat. I also used my 123 Go Nails. These were in the Extra Extra long, long Coffin. I used the Activator and the Base Coat from Lifu. And I think that's all that I used for this set. Um, I also did do a top coat underneath the nail, but I didn't like how that turned off, so I took all that off. <laughs> I just filed it down to, um, I didn't take all of the dipping powder off. I took about two coats of it off and then, um, I'm just starting over, um, <laughs> uh, with some base coat and, um, with the Lifu base coat and then I'll show you the colors I'm using. So I'm going to use... On two nails, I'm using this Enel Couture in Diamond White. This is an acrylic. And then the pink is Azure Beauty in Nude Pink. So for the Nude Pink, I ended up doing three coats. For the Diamond White, I did two coats. I did encapsulate the Diamond White in clear because some of the glitters were a little chunky. Um, the pink, I did not encapsulate in clear. So two layers of the diamond white with one layer of clear and the pink, I did three layers of the pink. So again, you just wanna go in with, you know, the thin layers of your base coat. 
dip it, tap it, and then once it dries, brush it off. So I'm not going to talk through this whole thing because I really feel like I've been rambling for the past 14 minutes. Um, so I'm not going to talk through this whole thing, but I will come back in a couple moments.
I left a lot of the application in on this video is because for me, it's satisfying to watch um, the dip powder process. And so I didn't know if it would be satisfying for some of you guys to watch. Um, the reason I'm using these little um, suction things, I forgot what they're called, um, is because these pots are smaller. With the first application I did of dip powder, the one I removed, that pot was big enough for me just to dip my whole nail in, but these pots aren't big enough. So you could either scoop it with um, a spoon, a cuticle pusher, you could pour it. Um, I do it all different ways. Uh, so there's really no right or wrong way to do it. It's just really your preference and what works best for you. Um, yeah, that's all I could really say about dipping. I know there's like so many dip powder videos out now. So really to give detailed instructions, um, there's so many videos out. But if you guys want a step-by-step -step dip powder from start to finish video from me, let me know in the comments below. I do have a couple new dip powder kits that I have to test. So maybe um, that is a video I can do for you. So with a review of one of the dip powder kits I have that I've had since December and I haven't opened, I can give you guys a step-by-step -step if that is what you'd like. Um, what else do I want to say in this video? Uh, I did the hand filing off camera. The only time I did um, use the e-file was to take some of the bulk down off the cuticle area and um, oh here I'm showing you the um, adding the activator I add a lot of activator and so what I did was I did one hand at a time in this video so I did my whole left hand I saturated that in in activator and then I went in and did my right hand saturated that with activator came back to my left hand and did the filing and shaping. And then by the time I got to the right hand, it was dry, so I did the filing and shaping there. Um, depending on how many layers you use, you can um, add the activator after two layers of dip powder, but this is three layers of dip powder, and I think between hands, it was about five to 10 minutes, so it was completely dry. You just wanna make sure that it's dry before you start filing. So here are the nails after they have been shaped and buffed. I overfiled a little bit on one nail. So these are the containers of the powders that I use. Um, Enel Contour in Diamond White and then Azure Beauty dipping powder in A02 and that color is called nude pink. I'm gonna go in and top coat both hands with this Yoyogi top coat. I've been using this top coat a lot lately and lately I've been liking it over um, my Model 1s. It's not as thick as the Model 1s, so for me, I'm not flooding my cuticles or my sidewalls and um, it just has a better shine, I think, than the Model 1s. And not that anything's wrong with the Model 1s because I love Model 1s, but lately I've just been using this top coat from Yoyogi and I don't know. I I need to order some more of this because I don't even know if they still have these same bottles on their website, but I'm pretty sure the formula is the same. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for listening to me ramble. I know I was kind of rambling in this video. I'm not sure if my thoughts were all over the place, but... I do thank you so much for spending your time with me. Um, I do thank you guys for continuing to support my channel. If you have any questions or questions about the products I use or suggestions for new videos, um, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know specifically if you want me to do a step-by-step -step dip powder video and I'll do it from nail prep to finish on one full hand um that's about it for now again thank you so much for watching if you're not already subscribed to my channel please consider doing so and i will see you guys again soon for another video thank you so much for watching